Hier ist der zweite Teil der Sendung Macht und Menschenrechte, Power and Human Rights auf Jungle Drum Radio. Mein Name ist Volker Reusing. Es ist Donnerstag, der 15. August 2013. Nun begrüße ich den amerikanischen Filmemacher Ace Baker. Um, hello, Mr. Baker. Hello. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you, um, you have produced um, uh, the great American uh, psy opera on uh, the events of 9-11. Um, well, um, what do you think are the most important uh, uh, pieces, uh, uh, news pieces uh, of reporting on 9-11 with decisive uh, errors on what happened uh, with uh, the World uh, Trade Center buildings? Well, I think the uh, some of the most important news uh, pieces are the airplane videos because as I show in my film the airplane videos are fake they they have to be uh, fake videos um, some other important pieces I think are <coughs> the you know the just the fact that the official story of 9-11 came out immediately And which means that the official story had to have been prepared in advance because if if what happened on 9-11 was really a big, big surprise, then the news media people couldn't have the story together the, the way that they had it. And if you just watch and listen to the news clips, um, they already figured out that Osama bin Laden was the guy that did it within just a few minutes of it happening. Um, there are uh, one of the glaring mistakes or errors um, was when they announced the collapse of Building 7 before it even happened. And that of course happened on the BBC news And a reporter named Jane Stanley is uh, is standing, you know, in front, uh, you know, and you can see the building, Building Seven, standing behind her, and she announces that it's that it's collapsed. So um, I think that the mistakes in the airplane videos um, and that announcing uh, announcing Building Seven collapsing before it happened were some pretty glaring mistakes. Ja, ich hatte Herrn Baker gefragt, er hat den Dokumentarfilm äh, The Great American Psy Opera äh, gedreht über ähm, die Ereignisse von 9-11, was die größten äh, Fehler sind, die meist größten äh, Fehler in der Berichterstattung bei 9-11 und ähm, bezüglich World Trade Center. Ja, einmal die gefälschten Videos mit den Flugzeugen, ähm, dann äh, das, äh, das Gebäude Nummer 7 bei der BBC wurde berichtet, ähm, ja, etliche Minuten bevor es zusammenbrach, dass äh, World Trade Center Nummer 7 schon zusammengebrochen sei. Und man sah hinter dem Reporter, dass das Gebäude immer noch, äh, der Reporter, das immer noch stand. Ähm, und ähm, ebenfalls, was nicht stimmen kann, ist die offizielle Geschichte, dass man so schnell auf äh, Osama Bin Laden kommt. Also praktisch, äh, während man noch die Katastrophenbilder gezeigt hat, in der Zeit so schnell kann niemand herausgefunden haben, äh, ob Osama Bin Laden dahinter steckte. Ähm, das äh, kann man nicht zeitgleich machen, da müssen Nachrichten vorbereitet worden sein. Uh, what do you mean about uh, that uh, the airplane videos are faked? How can we see it, that they are faked? <lacht> Right. I mean, I go through a lot of that evidence in my film, The Great American Psy Opera. Um, <clears throat> one of the most obvious uh, things that is fake, if you look at a particular video called Chopper 5, uh, <clears throat> the nose of the airplane appears to pop out of the backside of the building um, after the plane crashes, um, and it's it's impossible for the nose of an airplane to really go all the way through a steel and concrete building uh, because it's hollow and it's made out of plastic. So while that's impossible to have happened in real life, 
That's exactly the kind of problem that you would have maybe in trying to do a live video composite, which is, uh, which is how they had to fake these airplane videos. They took real footage and inserted a fake airplane, you know, a computer graphics airplane uh, into it. So the nose out in Chopper 5 is one big mistake. When you look at many of the videos, like uh, Fairbanks video and the Hezerkani video, you see the airplane going into the tower, but you don't see any part of the airplane breaking. You don't see any part of the building breaking. Nothing bends or twists. Uh, no part of the airplane uh, bounces off or or uh, shows any kind of physics at all. You just see an airplane that glides effortlessly into the side of the tower. Um, it shows no physics at all. Um, so it looks very, you know, the, all of the, the airplane videos look very fake for that for that reason. There are also some other mistakes when you compare the Hezerkani video to the Fairbanks video, uh, you'll see there's a particular puff of smoke that appears below the wing in one video and above the wing in another video, which would be impossible in real life, but it has a very simple, easy explanation in video effects. Uh, they simply got um, a layer mask in the wrong place. And I go and explain that and, and show that, how, how that works technically um, in, in uh, chapter seven of my film. So, and there are uh, a number of other things uh, too, but uh, the bottom line is that the 9-11 airplane videos look fake because they are fake. Yeah, the, I had a question about the 9-11 videos. Um, wie er darauf kommt, woran er gesehen hat, dass die äh, Flugzeugszenen äh, gefälscht seien. Da gibt es zum Beispiel ähm, ganz reale Videoaufnahmen aus dem Helikopter Nummer 5 und äh, die gemischt sind äh, mit, äh, einem, ähm, mit einer Computergrafik von einem Flugzeug. Und äh, dadurch ist es passiert, durch äh, Versehen, man hat eben ähm, Live-Videoaufnahmen mit dieser Computergrafik gemischt und durch ein Versehen schaut die Nase von dem Flugzeug auf der anderen Seite aus dem Hochhaus äh, zum World Trade Center heraus, als ob es da einfach durchgeflogen wäre. Und das ist physikalisch nicht möglich. Das ist ja das Gebäude ganz wesentlich aus Stahl und aus Beton. Und ähm, dann gibt es äh, andere Videos von Fairbanks und von Hesokoni. Ähm, die, wo, äh, wo das Flugzeug in das Gebäude hineinfliegt, aber nichts abbricht, sich nichts verbiegt und auch nichts abprallt, sondern einfach in das Gebäude hineinfliegt, was physikalisch auch nicht möglich ist. Weder vom Gebäude bricht da was ab, noch vom Flugzeug. Und ähm, man sieht in einem Video, sieht man Rauch über den Flügeln von dem Flugzeug und in einem anderen Video sieht man Rauch darunter. Es kann nicht beides richtig sein. Das sieht aus, als wenn eine Grafikschablone da falsch angelegt worden ist. Um, what do you think, how can such mistakes happen in mainstream media? Well, um, the, the nose out mistake happened because it was a live video. Now, normally, even live video on the news is delayed. Um, it's the same with uh, radio shows and television shows that are live. They usually delay the signal by about seven seconds so that if anything is said uh, or seen that they don't want going out over the air, they have a few seconds to hit a button and dump out of delay and, and bypass the thing that they don't want to be seen or heard. However, on 9-11, they had to 
go completely live without a delay. And that's because they wanted to have people on the phone supposedly witnessing an airplane crash from their windows of their apartments. Um, but what they really were doing was watching television to see the, the image of the second airplane. And so they could then say, oh my God, I just saw an airplane crash into the tower. Now, if the broadcast had been delayed as it normally would be, well, then these people on the phone would be out of sync. They, their comments would not be on time. So that's why they had to go completely live with no delay. And so that's what explains how the nose out mistake made it onto the air. Um, the, some of the other mistakes, like the the over under puff ball, um, maybe it was just uh, a mistake the, because th that, those were in edited videos that were not shown live that came out later. Uh, maybe they were just human mistakes that were made, or maybe of uh, the person who did the editing was leaving a mistake on purpose as a clue. Uh, I don't know. But, um, uh, you know, so mistakes, uh, mistakes can, can happen. I think actually one of, well, I mean, while, while we're talking about mistakes, one of the other things that we saw on 9-11 that we were not supposed to see was this molten metal that was pouring out of the South Tower uh, just a few minutes before it was blown up. Um, there's something, some kind of metal that's liquid and is bright, almost white in color, uh, like a very bright yellow color is dripping out of a window of the South Tower. Um, and then just a, a, a minute later or so, they, uh, they demolished that tower. And uh, there's simply no explanation other than some kind of incendiary, some kind of substance up there that gets about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that, you know, there's just simply no innocent explanation. So that's another mistake that that uh, molten metal was dripping out there. Um, ja, zu der Frage, wie kann es sein, dass solche Fehler in Massenmedien zu sehen sind? Ähm, normalerweise ist es so, ähm, dass man ungefähr sieben Sekunden Verzögerung hat bei einer Sendung, aber man wollte äh, ähm, offenbar Leute haben, die wirklich live am Telefon sind und sagen, was sie sehen und wenn sie das berichten, was sie im Fernsehen sehen und äh, aufgeregte Leute wollte man am Telefon haben und ähm, deswegen konnte man die sieben Sekunden Verzögerung nicht machen und so konnte es passieren, dass zum Beispiel der Fehler von Helikopter 5 mit der herausschauenden Flugzeugnase äh, zu sehen war. Sonst hätte man mit sieben Sekunden Verzögerung hätte man das verhindern können, dass das gesendet wird. Es kann sein, dass es äh, versehen gewesen sind. Vielleicht haben auch Leute, die da involviert gewesen sind, absichtlich solche es gemacht, dass solche ähm, Fehler zu sehen waren, um einen Hinweis zu geben. Aber darüber kann man hier an dieser Stelle jetzt nur spekulieren. Ähm, ein Fehler ist auch, dass man da ähm, ein äh, geschmolzenes äh, Material sieht, an einem Fenster aus dem Südturm, ähm, helles Gelb, fast weiß, äh, geschmolzenes Metall. Das würde auf eine Temperatur äh, dort ähm, von ungefähr 3000 Grad äh, Fahrenheit hindeuten. Eine Minute, bevor man ähm, dann äh, das den Südturm äh, ähm, gesprengt hat. Uh, you mean that is uh, this um, um, uh, seemingly uh, molten uh, Uh, metal is also fabricated. It's also computer graphic. Oh, no, no. In fact, it, it has to be real um, because we, we saw that uh, happening on live television. 
um, and faking something like the uh, an airplane is pretty easy because it's an inanimate object. It's just uh, it doesn't um, you know have to uh, have a lot of complex animation. But no, something like dripping molten metal would be very very difficult to animate. No, the the molten metal was uh, very very real. And what I suspect that that molten metal was about, actually, was that it, it appears to come from the the place in the South Tower, right where the uh, you know a bunch of the airplane wreckage would have landed, and right where a big piece of The airplane crash. Um, uh, das mit dem geschmolzenen Metall, das sieht, uh, da habe ich falsch verstanden, das sieht um, sehr real aus. Das ist sehr schwierig zu animieren. The, uh, um, sorry, I didn't get the last uh, sentences. Neighborhood. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry, moment, at the moment I can't, I can't hear you. Cannon that fired that object uh, out to create the impression that uh, one of the engines was um, penetrating all the way through the tower and, and flying out the other side. Uh, but then before they demolished the tower, they needed to melt down that cannon because, of course, if the cannon went flying out and we saw a, a giant cannon, you know, flying through the air, everyone would go, wait a minute, why is there a giant cannon flying out of the South Tower as it's blowing up? So I think they had to to melt that down uh, so that we didn't see it. And unfortunately, um, as they were melting that with something like thermite or uh, some kind of uh, high heavy duty incendiary, something that can generate temperatures of 3,000 degrees or more enough to melt steel. Uh, unfortunately, a bunch of that molten metal came dripping out of the South Tower, and we saw it. Um, I'm sorry that uh, we have, um, I have uh, for a short moment, uh, maybe half a minute, I have been disconnected from uh, from what you have said. It has been a technical problem. Um, I'm sorry. Um, um, as I have uh, understood, uh, is that one wanted to create the impression that um, there uh, has uh, been um, um, a part of the... Uh, Uh, of the of the plane inside the building, and um, and uh, what did one want uh, to hide uh, by uh, um, and uh, what caused this uh, uh, this melting uh, melting steel? Can you repeat? I'm sorry. Yeah, I believe that there was a cannon, a big military, like an old navy cannon because the place where we see that molten metal dripping out is the exact spot where it appeared that part of the airplane shot out of the backside of the tower, maybe uh, one of the engines of the airplane. And so I believe that they actually had a cannon up there in that tower and fired an airplane engine out of the backside to make us think that it had penetrated all the way through the tower and flown out the back side. However, I think that it was then necessary to melt that cannon to get rid of it because they knew they were going to blow up the tower in a few minutes and it could very easily throw that cannon out into the air where it would be seen. And we'd all go, what is a cannon doing up there in the South Tower? So I believe they melted it down, and unfortunately, uh, we saw the molten metal dripping out of the tower, which again has no innocent explanation at all. Yeah. 
Also ähm, es ging darum, ähm, ähm, Herr Baker vermutet, dass man vorhatte, so aussehen zu lassen, als ob ein äh, Motor vom Flugzeug auf der anderen Seite, wo das Flugzeug äh, in den Südturm in eingekreischt sein sollte, äh, dass man es auf der entgegengesetzten Seite äh, dann ein Motor vom Flugzeug herauskommen sollte, um diesen Eindruck zu erwecken, dass man da mit einer Art Kanone innerhalb des Gebäudes geschossen hat und dass man diese äh, wiederum, da wenn das Gebäude zusammenfallen würde, äh, dass die Leute nicht sehen, dass, äh, dass sie dort vorhanden ist, dass man die deswegen äh, dann ähm, ja, äh, geschmolzen hat und dass das dann zu sehen war. Um, if, uh, you say um, there has there's no airplane which has crashed into the towers and um if i look at your film i uh, want to uh, believe that it uh, has been made by computer graphics but uh, how do you then explain the passenger lists of the hijacked planes and the mo mobile phone calls from there right uh, the passenger lists were published on uh, i believe it was uh, cnn's website Just a few days after 9-11 and uh, one of the very interesting things about those passenger lists is that none of the uh, supposed hijackers were on were on those lists so um, uh, you know if we're to believe the official story we have to believe that those hijackers somehow got on those airplanes without buying tickets, which is very, very difficult uh, to believe. But I think that all four of those airplane flights really did happen. They all took off as advertised, and those people uh, who were uh, passengers on the plane really were passengers on the plane. And I think that all four planes really were hijacked. Of course, not by the uh, Arab terrorists that we were told hijacked the plane, but probably by some kind of uh, military special operations guys. Uh, and then the uh, airplanes were all landed. Uh, for example, the two Boston, uh, the, the two flights that took off out of Boston were probably landed at a place called Stewart Air Force Base, uh, which is in New York State, just north of New York City. Uh, and I, I think that because uh, the, uh, the radar track of both of those flights goes directly over Stewart Air Force Base. And in fact, both of the flights supposedly crossed over Stewart Air Force Base at exactly the same time, which is extremely uh, unlikely uh, to have happened by chance. Now, we know that on 9-11, they were injecting false radar blips into the radar screens of the air traffic controllers, supposedly as part of a war games that were coincidentally taking place on 9-11. So I think what they did is the real flights landed and then were replaced on radar by the fake radar blips, which then uh, continued on to the supposed uh, destinations. Um, so, and then as far as the passenger phone calls, um, <clears throat> as far as I know, There's only one recording of a phone call, and that was by flight attendant Betty Ong, who was a flight attendant on Flight 11, which uh, supposedly crashed into the North Tower. And that phone call took place fairly early on, uh, shortly after the hijacking. So I believe that was a real phone call that really was recorded. Um, and she really thought they were being hijacked because they really were. It was before the plane landed at Stewart Air Force Base. Uh, all of the rest of the supposed phone calls, I say, what phone calls? Um, 
none of the other ones were recorded. Uh, we have transcripts that were supposedly written down, um, but I don't. I just don't know why I should believe that any of those other phone calls even took place. You know, what 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 phone calls? Um, ja, also zu den Passagierlisten, ähm, die sind wenige Tage später bei CNN veröffentlicht worden und keine von den Passagierlisten enthielt auch nur einen einzigen Namen der angeblichen Entführer der Flugzeuge und ähm, die, äh, es ist sehr unwahrscheinlich, dass keiner der Flugzeugentführer der angeblichen, äh, dass kein einziger von denen ein Ticket gekauft hat. Und ähm, ja, dann gibt es äh, die Frage vom äh, falschen äh, Rad, ähm, Radarbildern. Es ist ja am gleichen Tag auch eine ähm, Simulation gemacht worden, also äh, ein, eine Übung. Ähm, und äh, ob da falsche Radarbilder, also Radarbilder von dieser Übung gezeigt worden sind. Ähm, und ähm, ein Teil der Flugzeuge scheint auch dann äh, ihr Ziel äh, erreicht zu haben. Ähm, die aufgezeichneten Gespräche, also ähm, die meisten Gespräche gibt es nur aufgezeichnet auf Papier. Und nur eins ist auf, als Tondokument aufgezeichnet. Und das äh, scheint relativ kurz nach der angeblichen Entführung schon aufgenommen worden zu sein. Äh, vom Flug Nummer 11, der angeblich in den Nordturm gecrasht sein soll. Ähm, ähm, can you uh, just uh, only repeat uh, what has be uh, become of, uh, the, uh, of the airplanes which have uh, landed uh, um, and, uh, the, uh, where they were supposed to land? Right. I think that two of the flights landed at Stewart Air Force Base in New York. I think the, uh, uh, the third plane, I think, landed at Cleveland at the NASA facility, which, by the way, is uh, something very interesting that was, I think, figured out by Dylan Avery in uh, his film Loose Change, the very original, the very first version of Loose Change. Uh, noted that uh, <clears throat> that Flight 93 was reported in the news to have landed uh, near Cleveland, and the radar tracks it all the way up to Cleveland. Um, and then the fourth flight, uh, 77, that supposedly crashed into the Pentagon, uh, flew way, way west um, and then came way back east for a long time, was flying around for almost two hours, I think. Um, and it could have landed at any number of little uh, landing strips along the way. So uh, I'm sure that the, the passengers and crew were killed um, at these secret locations. And then they probably took... Uh, blood samples and so forth, and brought those samples to the supposed crash sites like uh, the Pentagon and the Twin Towers and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and left those bits around so that they then could um, collect that evidence and do DNA testing. And so the DNA testing then was perfectly legitimate. I'm sure it was able to to match up with those people. And you know, I'm sure they just took the airplanes and took them apart and 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 disposed and disposed of them. Um, ja, zwei der Flüge ähm, vermutet Herr Baker, dass sie bei Stewart äh, Air Force äh, Basis äh, bei, bei New York gelandet sind. Äh, der Flug 93 ähm, soll, ähm, da bezieht er sich auf den Film äh, Lose Change ähm, in äh, Cleveland äh, äh, ge äh, gelandet sein. Und äh, da äh, gibt es auch entsprechend ähm, ähm, über Radabel berichtet worden sein. Ähm, dazu und Flug Nummer 77, der sei ähm, relativ weit nach Westen und hinterher wieder äh, nach östlicher Richtung geflogen. Er könnte an vielen Stellen gelandet sein, der angeblich in das Pentagon gecrasht sein soll. 
Und ähm, da, wo eine angebliche Absturzstelle eines Flugzeugs gewesen sein soll und auch beim Pentagon, soweit man da ähm, Spuren äh, vom Blut gefunden hat, kann man das auch, äh, kann man auch woanders äh, das Blut ähm, an anderer Stelle bekommen haben das, äh, und dann dorthin gebracht haben, um äh, scheinbar Beweise zu fabrizieren. Ähm, ähm, also, ähm, um, look at uh, World Trade Center 7. Uh, um, it looks like uh, a normal controlled demolition. If you if you look how it collapses, uh, is does this support the thesis that uh, it has uh, been uh, demolition by with a nanotermite? Right. Um, you know, whether it was uh, nanothermite or what kind of explosives were used, I don't know. I mean, it certainly was a controlled demolition. I mean, there's just, I just don't think, you know, that anybody can dispute that. I mean, you know, buildings simply don't just fall straight down into their footprint uh, without very careful engineering. Um, you know, I, as far as The whole thermite theory, I'm a little troubled by th the thermite in general. Uh, this is, of course, the theory of Dr. Stephen Jones, uh, among, among others, and he supposedly has found evidence of thermite in the dust samples. Uh, <clears throat> but certainly with regard to the Twin Towers, Uh, and probably Building 7, I, I, I don't think you can explain what happened to the Twin Towers with thermite. Uh, thermite is uh, an aluminothermic uh, reaction. It's, um, <clears throat> and it, it produces molten uh, iron, but if, I mean, thermite really isn't an explosive. Now, maybe nanothermite has explosive properties but it's it's really an incendiary used for burning melting things at very high temperatures but not for exploding things they don't really use thermite in controlled demolitions but um, when you look at all of the rest of the evidence I mean we have radioactive tritium uh, we have really the Twin Towers almost completely Uh, disintegrated. I mean, there's virtually nothing left of them when this event is over. We have, uh, they were just rendered into fine dust. And we have these, this huge hole in bedrock underneath where the South Tower stood. We have all these rare cancers that the first responders are coming down with. Um, we have this, uh, what appears to be a China syndrome, where the ground zero had this white colored uh, smoke or something coming up uh, for months and months and months after the event. And uh, nanothermite is a very quick reaction. It's over very soon. And it, it doesn't continue to react for weeks and months, but nuclear reactions, of course, do. Um, and this kind of white uh, smoke coming up from the ground is exactly the same kind of effect that we saw in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki after the uh, nuclear attacks uh, on those two cities in uh, 1945. Um, so in general, I'm I'm suspicious about the uh, about the thermite theory um, for, for those reasons. But uh, certainly, uh, Building Seven was a controlled demolition, and Building Seven is a great mystery. Um, you know, the fact that that this third building uh, went down at 5:20 in the afternoon, long, long after the whole rest of 9-11 uh, took place is very strange and uh, it might have been another mistake you know maybe it was 
supposed to have uh, been demolished much sooner, like when the you know when one of the other two towers uh, was demolished, or uh, I, I don't know. You know, it's very it's a very strange mystery. Building seven. Ja, es geht mir darum, ähm, ob man an der äh, kontrollierten äh, Sprengung beim World Trade Center äh, äh, 7, das fiel ja zusammen, wie man typischerweise Hochhäuser äh, sprengt, und ähm, ob, man, ob das die Nanothermit-Theorie äh, unterstützt. Ähm, Nanothermit-Theorie wird unter anderem von Dr. Stephen Jones und auch anderen äh, vertreten. Äh, Nano, äh, also Thermit an sich erstmal ist, äh, sorgt für hohe Temperaturen, ist äh, eher etwas zum, äh, zum Entzünden, kann auch ähm, Stahl schmelzen, äh, Eisen schmelzen aber ist selber kein explosiver Stoff, Nanothermit vielleicht, aber das nimmt man normalerweise auch nicht äh, für kontrollierte Sprengungen. Ähm ja, das World Trade Center äh, ist, eben, ist auch deswegen schon Rätsel, weil es so viel später auch gesprengt wurde als äh, die äh, anderen Gebäude. Ähm, es gibt andere äh, Beweis, äh, andere Indizien bei den beiden äh, Türmen vom World Trade Center. Da fand man das radioaktive Tritium, man fand das äh, große Loch unter dem Südturm, da ist äh, ein Staub, äh, die riesen Staubwolke, äh, das ganze, ganze Gebäude, die Türme sind ja zu Staub geworden. Ähm, dann dieses ähm, China-Syndrom, die seltenen Krebsarten von den, erst, äh, von den Leuten, die direkt nach dem Ereignis dort als Katastrophenhelfer eingesetzt waren. Dann monatelang weißer Rauch, der da aus den Löchern kam, wie man es sonst in Hiroshima und Nagasaki gesehen hat. Das spricht äh, dafür, dass es nuklear gewesen ist. Ähm, has uh, the, the cloud of the uh, collapse of the uh, towers not been too small for something nuclear? Well, I think they... Um It certainly uh, is not as big as um, you know uh, something that you know would take out a whole city, uh, but I think they have uh, developed micro nuclear weapons, very small by nuclear standards, um, nuclear explosives. So um, you know, I I think when you consider the totality of the evidence that that. Nuclear reactions really are the only thing that that fits. So I think they have developed micro nuclear weapons that are that are small enough. Ja, ähm, meiner Vorstellung her die äh, die Wolken, die man gesehen hat bei dem Zusammenbruch der beiden Türme. Ich habe mir nuklear äh, die Effekte von Nuklearwaffen immer wesentlich größer vorgestellt, aber man scheint heute ähm, ja, für Verhältnisse von Nuklearwaffen äh, auf welche entwickelt zu haben mit äh, wesentlich äh, kleinerer Auswirkung, als man es bei Hiroshima oder Nagasaki gesehen hat. Wenn man sich insgesamt die Auswirkungen anschaut und die Indizien, ist das Einzige, was, was passen würde, das verursacht zu haben. In Uh, your film, you have uh, said that there are several um, holes at the um, uh, World Trade Center sites with a, a diameter of each about seven or eight meters. Is there any pattern where uh, these holes are? And are they possible um, um, at some um, specific places? Um, um, Uh, beneath the uh, South Tower and, and the North Tower. Right. Well, there is a uh, there's a huge hole in bedrock, and this is you know Manhattan is bedrock. It's granite, and there is was a huge hole. I mean, bigger than seven or eight meters, uh, about the size of the the footprint of the building itself. I mean, just an enormous pit underneath where the South Tower stood. And um, I think that could be explained by uh, nuclear reacting material is pushing its way 
down. Um, I can't really think of any other explanation f for that. Um, I just I just can't. Um, there are a whole number of other holes. I know uh, Judy Wood made a, a big deal in some of her presentations about these holes. And from the aerial photograph of Ground Zero, you do see a great number of very round holes that uh, appear to have been created. And I think that smaller chunks of nuclear reacting material falling down would exactly explain the creation of round holes. Um, it's you know uh, going to create a round pattern of destruction at, as it destroys things you know in a circumference <clears throat> around the center of the reacting material. So um, you know those holes are uh, very interesting. Also es gibt ein großes Loch unter dem Südturm und äh, es gibt viele kleinere Löcher ähm, und darüber hat vor allem auch äh, Judy Wood geforscht und wo, äh, welche Ursache diese haben könnten und als Baker erklärt es sich so, dass die übrigen Löcher daher kommen können, dass ähm, reagierendes ähm, radioaktives Material dorthin gefallen ist und ähm, das ver verursacht hat. Um, um, did I get it right that there's only one really huge hole be be below the South Tower, but not below the North Tower? Well, I don't, I don't know about the North Tower. Um, I, I found photographs um, and figured out by the landmarks that this the hole that we do have a picture of is directly underneath where the south tower stood um i don't there may very well have been one under the north tower also i just don't think we have a picture um because the the picture that we have that shows the hole under the south tower is after uh, much of the debris had been cleared away and they appear to be um filling in the hole with with concrete to build it back up. So what happened under the North Tower, we, we just don't know. That could very well have been a, a hole uh, similar under the North Tower as well. We just don't know. Ja, es ging mir darum, ähm, dieses große Loch, was, man, was unter dem Südturm war, das äh, konnte man nachvollziehen anhand von, äh, von Fotografien und das äh, nach dem 11. September dort äh, Arbeiten begannen, um es äh, wieder aufzufüllen. Aber vergleichbare Bilder liegen Herrn Baker nicht vor bezüglich des Nordturms, sodass er darüber keine äh, äh, klare Aussage treffen kann, ob es, ähm, ob es da vergleichbare Spuren gibt. Es könnte sein, aber es äh, liegt da äh, kein äh, vergleichbares Beweismaterial vor, was mit dem Nordturm passiert ist. Ähm, um, what I do not understand uh, yet is that uh, from one of the towers, um, um, a part of the metal construction has not been destroyed or has been has this been destroyed uh, later. And how this could happen if it was a, um, something uh, nuclear uh, happening? Uh, below below the tower that's confusing for me right well i don't think that the the nuclear event happened below the tower uh, at all now of course that is a a theory that's being put out there by a guy named uh, dmitry kalazov and um i think to me it seems quite clear just from watching the videos that whatever kind of explosives were used in the Twin Towers, they were in the core, the central core of each tower and exploded in a timed sequence right straight down uh, from the, you know, where the supposed airplanes were right on down uh, ground. 
Um, so, you know, I don't think they would take a chance on an explosion coming from under the ground because they could not control um, how the tower was destroyed. Remember, you have to create the impression as best you can of a collapse. And that collapse has to appear to begin right where that airplane damage is. If the collapse of the tower starts in the wrong place, just a few floors below uh, or above where <clears throat> your airplane hole is, well, it's not going to look right. So uh, for sh I'm quite sure that whatever kind of explosives were used, they were in the core of the tower and they went in a timed sequence. I mean, you see the explosions, boom, 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 going right down, dot, 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 down in order, in sequence, right down the towers. So, um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't buy into the underground nuclear theory. I don't, I don't buy that. Um, ja, ähm, es ging mir darum, ähm, um, wenn da etwas, ob da etwas Nukleares unter den Türmen ähm, gestartet worden ist. Das äh, erscheint aber unwahrscheinlich, ähm, weil ähm, es musste, sollte ja so aussehen, dass da, wo das Flugzeug äh, hineingekreischt ist, dass es dort äh, beginnt äh, einzustürzen. Da, äh, die Explosionen, die wurden ja ähm, an verschiedenen Stellen im, in dem Turm äh, gestartet und ähm, ja, und das ist, äh, Herr Baker geht eher davon aus, dass es in, ähm, im Zentrum des Turms gewesen ist, auf verschiedenen Etagen gestartet worden ist, eine nach der anderen. Ähm, ähm, es gibt auch eine Theorie, dass man es unterhalb des Turms gestartet hat, aber dann hätte man es wahrscheinlich nicht so aussehen lassen können, dass äh, es irgendetwas mit dem äh, Crash des angeblichen Crash des Flugzeugs zu tun haben könnte. Uh, couldn't it be the way that they have done a controlled uh, demolition uh, one, uh, um, uh, one etage, one step uh, after the other in combination with uh, a nuclear um, demolition below the, uh, the World Trade Centers? Well, I, I guess, but I think there's just a number of problems with using conventional explosives. And one is just the sheer amount of explosives that you would have to bring into the building. When you look at how strong and how big those buildings were, and you start um, looking at just how much explosive would be needed to cut up all that steel um, it would just be so so large and I just don't know that uh, that they would physically be able to smuggle um, and set all of that explosive in, in in all of those places it would be a just a much much bigger job whereas uh, nuclear explosives of course could be very very small and far fewer of them. And then the, the, other, the other problem with uh, conventional explosives is that uh, conventional explosives are used to cut the steel um, into pieces <clears throat> where the building essentially falls down. Um, that's not really what we see with the Twin Towers. Uh, most of the Twin Towers disappeared. I mean, they're, they're gone. When you look at the photographs of the debris, you cannot account for more than 20 or 30 percent of the steel that was used in those, in those towers. Um, and uh, like the floors, for example, you know, each floor was about a one acre in size a steel pan, a floor pan that had steel uh, reinforced concrete with it 
and there were 107 of those steel pans in each tower. Um, and we just don't see any evidence of any of those steel pans in any picture. I mean, they're gone. And uh, I just conventional explosives would rip that steel, yes, it would tear it up, uh, would blow holes in it, but would not make it disappear the way that we see. Um. Ja, ich hatte die Frage gestellt, könnte es sein, dass man etagenweise konventionell gesprengt hat, wie bei einer kontrollierten äh, Sprengung, und dass unterhalb des Gebäudes dann ähm, etwas mit Nuklearsprengung hätte sein können. Aber ähm, was dagegen spricht, ist, man hätte unglaubliche Mengen dorthin bringen müssen an konventionellen Sprengstoff, um diese Sprengung vorzunehmen. Und das wäre wahrscheinlich aufgefallen. Und konventioneller Sprengstoff der macht Löcher in den Stahl und er bricht Stahl und äh, wird es vielleicht zerfetzen. Nur ähm, es kann nicht sein, dass bei konventionellen Sprengstoff hinterher am Boden nur noch 20 bis 30 Prozent des Stahls ankommt. Es äh, waren praktisch, es waren Stahlschichten zwischen den ganzen Etagen. Pro Gebäude 107 Schichten dazwischen. Dann hätte mehr als 20 bis 30 Prozent von dem Stahl übrig bleiben müssen. Äh, so you mean that there have been many very small uh, nuclear ex uh, explosions. Yes, exactly. I think it looks to me like about one for every three or four stories. You know, you can see the, you know, the, as the towers start to go down, you see the sequence of explosions happening. Boom, 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 boom. They, you know, seems to be about one every three or four stories, something like that. So, yeah, probably about <clears throat> 20 or 30 devices per tower, something like that. Um, ja, dann wäre da die Schlussfolgerung, dass es ganz viele verhältnismäßig winzige atomare Explosionen gegeben hat. Ja, er schätzt, äh, ja, jedes dritte bis vierte Stockwerk, dass es dort eine solche Explosion gegeben hat. Um, um, one moment. Um, how can um, uh, if something nuclear has happened at the World Trade uh, Center towers, um, then as they normally would have to be um, a big um, uh, amount of radiation. Um, not only at that time, but also for many years uh, after 9-11. Um, and um, do you know any, anything about measurements of uh, significantly increased radiation at New York? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there was uh, highly elevated levels of, of radioactive tritium that were measured uh, in the groundwater Uh, about uh, 60 times the normal background level. Uh, <clears throat> and also there were, there's two elements, strontium and barium, which basically have no business being in the dust samples at all. And they were not only uh, found there, uh, but they were highly correlated to each other. Um, in the samples where the strontium went up, uh, the barium levels also went up. And strontium and barium are a fingerprint uh, for a nuclear reaction, particularly a plutonium reaction. When plutonium breaks down, it breaks into smaller elements and smaller elements. And some of the first relatively stable elements that occur are strontium and, and barium. So, and then, but then I think also that nuclear reactions can be made more efficient. Um, in theory, actually, you could make a perfect nuclear reaction that left no radiation at all. I mean, Einstein's famous E equals mc squared is 
that, that mass can be converted into energy. And if you perfectly convert mass into energy, there's no resulting uh, neutrons left over at all. So um, the radiation from a nuclear bomb is actually the inefficient part of, of the reaction. So perhaps they've made nuclear reactions much more efficient. So I think they're, first of all, smaller you know, micro-nuclear reactions. I think they are more efficient, better nuclear reactions. And then I think there was radiation that was measured and is also what is making all the first responders so sick with leukemia and thyroid cancer and these other radiation-related illnesses. And then, <clears throat> lastly, um, they literally covered up um, one of the interesting things about the cleanup at Ground Zero was the amount of dirt that they brought in. Um, immediately uh, after 9-11, they started trucking in tons and tons and tons of dirt and started covering up the entire site with dirt, which... Uh, whether, it, you know, uh, you know, which I think is exactly what you would do if you were trying to deal with a, a nuclear reaction. Um, you cover, you cover it up and that, I mean, I know that they did a lot of that at Chernobyl, for example, they brought in a lot of earth and began burying things to try to limit the amount of exposure. So, and then I know that um, no, no people were, you know, you weren't allowed to go to Ground Zero for a long time after 9-11, so it's not like other people could go there with their Geiger counters to measure the level of radiations. So, um, yeah, so for all of those reasons, um, uh, yeah, I think, I, think there was, uh, or I think there was radiation measured and, um, and, and like that. Ja, wenn dort tatsächlich nukleare Reaktionen stattgefunden haben am 11. September 2001, dann müssten ja normalerweise Jahre danach noch ähm, deutlich erhöhte Strahlenwerte da sein. Ähm, was man damals äh, gemessen hat, ist erhöhte, äh, 60-fach erhöhte Menge an Tritium im Vergleich zum normalen äh, Hintergrund. Level, was auch ohne besondere nukleare Ereignisse halt in der Umwelt ist. Und es wurden auch erhöhte Werte an Strontium und Barium gefunden. Ähm, diese äh, Elemente findet man auch ähm, nach Nuklearreaktionen, wenn Plutonium zerfällt. Und, nach einer, und das zerfällt halt stufenweise. Und Strontium und Barium sind somit die ersten einigermaßen stabilen Elemente, die beim Zerfallprozess entstehen. Stellt sich auch die Frage, inwieweit man heute bei der Entwicklung solcher äh, Waffen ist, vor allem wenn man äh, wie weit man ist, ähm, einerseits sie zu miniaturisieren, auch von der Auswirkung her im Vergleich zu den ursprünglichen, und wie weit man die Strahlenentwicklung minimieren kann, wenn man nach Einstein geht, wenn man Einsteins Formel perfekt umsetzen würde, äh, aus äh, Masse Energie zu machen, dann dürfte es dabei eigentlich keine Strahlung geben. Und die ganze Strahlung, die dabei entsteht, die Radioaktivität, ist ähm, die, die Ineffizienz, die dabei, äh, dass man dabei ineffizient ist, Masse in Energie zu verwandeln. Und könnte sein, dass man es wesentlich verbessert hat, dass man dabei weniger Radioaktivität produziert als früher. Ähm, es hat Fälle gegeben, gerade von Schilddrüsenkrebs, gerade von Leukämie, äh, erhöht bei den Leuten, die nach der Katastrophe geholfen haben. Man hat riesige Mengen an Dreck und Erde dorthin gekarrt, um das Ganze abzudichten, wie man es nach einem ähm, Nuklearunfall äh, auch machen würde. Und äh, lange Zeit war der Zugang für den Platz, äh, World Trade Center verboten, sodass die Leute nicht mit ihren Geigerzählern dahin gehen und ähm, regelmäßig testen konnten. Um, I think uh, uh, is there not uh, um, increased radiation all over Manhattan? I, that's what I would imagine. Well, and I mean, you, and you make a good point. Um, and uh, as far as I know, there's not increased radiation all over Manhattan. So, um, 
But again, I think that's a, it would be explained by a combination of those things that I that I just discussed. That they're smaller nuclear weapons than what we know about. They're more efficient, so there's less radiation to deal with. Um, that they did the best job of covering up what radiation uh, did happen, um, and then the fact that there uh, actually is evidence of of radiation, you know. So I think it's all, all, all four of those things. Um. Ich habe mir die Frage, habe ich Frage gestellt, müsste denn nicht in ganz Manhattan die Strahlung erhöht sein? Das ist nicht bekannt, das, äh, aber es könnte eine Kombination sein. Ähm, also einmal äh, kleinere, äh, dass, man, dass man kleinere Waffen macht, dann die jeweils weniger Strahlung verursachen und dass man äh, bestmöglich äh, diese, äh, die Strahlung dann wieder eingedämmt hatte. Um, um, how uh, would do you explain to yourself uh, what is also shown in your film that there are deformed cars and uh, deformed uh, steel girders and that they are looking uh, rusty but that uh, seemingly uh, pieces of paper are un unaffected right that is uh <coughs> Uh, that's some of uh, Judy Wood stuff. I I think you know there are uh, like some 1,400 melted motor vehicles, uh, and again, yeah. it looks v very much like some of the photographs that we've seen from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, and the, the deformed steel girders. Um, again, uh, you know, extremely high temperatures. Uh, melting things. You know, I don't know that paper was unaffected. Um, it could simply have been that there was a huge blast pressure wave uh, that pushed many things out in front of the the blast pressure, and that you know some of those pieces of paper you know, settled down you know into the scene later on. I you know I don't know that that paper was was unaffected, and I. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure pieces of paper were very much affected. I'm sure there were, you know, most of the paper inside the Twin Towers was annihilated, I'm sure. You know, it's just that some maybe a few uh, things right at the perimeter of the towers uh, were pushed out ahead of the blast wave. Um. Der Dokumentarfilm zeigt ja auch, dass ähm, zum Teil Autos äh, verbogen gewesen sind, dass Stahlträger verbogen gewesen sind und dass sie rostig aussahen, dass aber Papier zum Teil ähm, ja nicht, nicht verbrannt, nicht zu Staub zerfallen war. Und eine Erklärung dafür könnte sein, man hat es auch in Hiroshima auch und in Nagasaki gesehen, durch äh, enorme Temperaturen, dass dadurch Stahl äh, schmilzt und sich verformt. Und dieses Papier, das kann auch an den, von den Gebäuden ringsum gekommen sein. Das meiste Papier, was in dem World Trade Center war, ist ja auch zu Staub verfallen. Also es müsste, es könnte von Gebäuden ringsum gekommen sein und dort hineingeweht sein. Das äh, Papier, was da direkt getroffen worden ist, äh, wie die Wagen, das wird äh, wohl an äh, Ort und Stelle äh, eben auch zerstört worden sein. Um, uh, what do you think, which um, questions do we have to ask to find out who has been responsible for 9-11? Well, you know, when, when any crime happens and they start to investigate the crime, one of the first questions that they will ask is, Qui bono, which uh, is the Latin for who benefits. And um, so no matter what you believe actually happened on 9-11, I don't think there's any question that the real benefit 
came to the United States government. Um, that's who benefited from 9-11. Um, you look at all of the changes that occurred based on 9-11. They got the, uh, the Patriot Act, um, very important piece of legislation. Um, they created our Department of Homeland Security. Um, they uh, took over security at airports. It was prior to 9-11 uh, in the United States. Uh, security at airports was by private companies. And now in the U.S. we have the TSA, which is a government agency that... Uh, that runs airport security. And of course, <clears throat> they um, justified their invasion of the Middle East, of Iraq and Afghanistan, based on 9-11. Um, and and many, other, uh, many other things too. You know, here in the United States, to this day, and it's now August of the year 2013, and to this day, uh, hardly one day goes by that I don't see a mention of 9-11 in the newspaper or on the television news. Um, it is still the, the rationale for many, many things. So I think, I think the key, key question to begin asking is, is cui bono? Ja, die Frage... Um welche, welche Fragen müssen wir uns stellen, um herauszufinden, wer steckt hinter 9-11? Und eine der wichtigsten Fragen ist, wer hat davon profitiert oder auf Lateinisch cui bono? Und äh, zu denen, die profitiert haben, gehört äh, die äh, Regierung der USA. Sie haben ähm, den Patriot Act durchbekommen, ähm, die haben ähm, neues System für innere Sicherheit, Homeland Security, die Sicherheitseinrichtungen an Flughäfen sind wieder verstaatlicht worden. Man hat einen Grund gehabt, man hat es mit 9-11 begründet, in Irak und Afghanistan einzumarschieren. Und das Bewusstsein wird bis heute von 9-11 sehr stark bestimmt. Es vergeht kaum ein Tag, wo man nicht entweder in der Zeitung oder im Fernsehen wieder an 9-11 erinnert wird. Ähm... Uh, maybe um, there are, um, I, I remember um, in the uh, book um, uh, book of uh, Naomi Klein um, 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 th that uh, Donald Rumsfeld has held a, a speech about privatization of the army uh, at, uh, one day before 9-11. It's also uh, a, a fundamental change which uh, has uh, been done in after 9-11. I think um, many things have been done which have been in the pipeline and then there has been a catastrophe and uh, things have been realized. Right, you know, and of course uh, Rumsfeld was part of that uh, uh, project for the new American century which was that a think tank um, who <clears throat> issued that uh, the their report called Rebuilding America's Defenses, and I think that came out in like the year 1999, and um, they envisioned all of these uh, global transformations that they wanted, and that they said that it was uh, The process was going to be a long one, absent a catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. Yes, and of course they, they got that. They got their new Pearl Harbor, didn't they? Um, ich hatte das Beispiel erwähnt, was ich in um, um, Naomi Kleins Buch uh, gelesen habe, Schock, Schockdoktrin. Mm -hmm. Ähm, dass äh, Donald Rumsfeld, damaliger Verteidigungsminister, einen Tag vor dem vor 9-11 eine Rede gehalten hat zur Privatisierung ähm, von Tätigkeiten der Armee. Und ähm, dass das ein weiteres Beispiel ist, was man dann nach 9-11, nachdem diese Katastrophe passiert ist, äh, verwirklicht hat. Und ähm, ja, 
äh, weg hat ergänzt, äh, Ramsfeld ähm, auch äh, zu den Leuten gehört von ähm, einem Projekt ähm, für ein neues amerikanisches Jahrhundert. Und äh, die haben 1999 ein Papier herausgegeben mit dem Namen Rebuilding America's Defenses, also Amerikas äh, Verteidigung, Verteidigungsstrategien wieder aufbauen und äh, mit Überlegungen, welche globalen Veränderungen sie haben möchten. Und dass das wahrscheinlich lange dauern würde, es sei denn, es gäbe ein ja, besonderes ähm, erschütterndes Ereignis und 9-11 ist äh, solch ein Ereignis passiert und dann wurden einige äh, Veränderungen umgesetzt. Um, I would um, like uh, to ask, have you ever had uh, any kind of repression uh, um, as a kind of retaliation for, uh, for, your, for your work you are doing to find out about 9-11? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, they deleted my Wikipedia article. <laughs> um, there, I um, have been a, a musician and a, a music composer, and I've uh, worked on some films and some TV shows, um, and uh, before that was in some bands on some tours. And uh, there was um, a Wikipedia article uh, about me uh, that uh, different people uh, wrote. And it was on Wikipedia for three or four years. Um, and and I, I, don't, I don't know who, who, who wrote the article, but it was there. Uh, and it had a bunch of my music credits and so on. Um, but when... Um, Great American Psy Opera came out, uh, I decided to edit my own article about me and include a mention of my film, which you're allowed to do on Wikipedia. You can edit the article about yourself. As a matter of fact, you're encouraged to. They want uh, the biographies to be accurate. Um, And when I included a mention of the Great American Psy Opera film in my Wikipedia article, all of a sudden I started getting a lot of hits on my website <coughs> for watching the film. I mean, a lot more. And, um, but then somebody started attacking the article started making edits, taking out the stuff about is the Psy Opera film and taking out a lot of things. And we were having an edit war. And then they put my article up for deletion and were able to have the article deleted completely. And it's now gone. And I uh, absolutely believe that it was in retaliation for making the film. Ich habe Herrn Baker gefragt, ob er ähm, jemals ähm, einen Druck bekommen hat, äh, Repression, ähm, Racheakte dafür, dass er äh, die aufterrorische Arbeit, die Recherchen macht über 9-11 und ähm, ja, es gibt äh, einen Wikipedia, es gab einen Wikipedia-Artikel über ihn und seine Arbeit und er hat ihn, ihn nicht selber geschrieben, aber, äh, sondern andere Leute hatten über ihn geschrieben und der war drei bis vier Jahre ungefähr bei Wikipedia und dann, als er den Film The Great American Psy Opera ähm, herausgebracht hatte, hat er in dem äh, Wikipedia-Artikel, den andere über ihn geschrieben haben, sich ergänzt und dann fing es an, dass äh, das rausgelöscht wurde, der Hinweis auf seinen Film. Ähm, bis das gelöscht wurde, war die Zugriffszahlen auf seinen Film im Internet äh, deutlich gestiegen gewesen und dann fing man an, weitere Dinge zu löschen um Wikipedia über ihn. Dann gab ein langes Hin und Her, ähm, dass, äh, dass verschiedene Seiten ständig äh, an, äh, die, den Artikel über ihn geändert haben, bis der Artikel schließlich von Wikipedia ganz rausgelöscht wurde und er jetzt keinen wikipedia antrag mehr hat. If, a moment... Um, um, 
uh, if um, people want uh, to um, uh, to buy the film or um, the music of the film, or where uh, can they uh, get a copy of the film or of the music? Oh, you know, I, I'd like to make that available. I, I haven't as yet, and uh, I'm sorry, but to, um, we can, um, you know, give out my my email address, I suppose, and uh, people are are free to send me an email. Uh, it's acebaker one two three four at yahoo dot com, and uh, uh, send me an email. Let me know, and I'll 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 see what I can do. Ja, wenn, ähm, wenn Leute den, den Film oder die Musik kaufen wollen, wo können sie sie beziehen? Und am besten melden sich die Leute direkt ähm, per E-Mail bei S. Baker unter seiner Yahoo-E-Mail-Adresse. Um, do you have um, any hint how um, a media embeddedment uh, is working? How uh, what makes uh, um, media to present a false uh, or erroneous uh, reporting on 9/11? Well, I think the explanation has to be that the government writes the news. Um, I think the government controls to a large extent what the media says. You know, on 9-11, I mean, we have, the, of course, the, the reporting of Building 7 collapsing before it ever even happened. And they didn't just tell you that it collapsed, but Uh, reporter Philip Hayton and Jane Stanley explained why it collapsed. In other words, they gave you the official story, uh, and that's because it was important to tell people what to think. Um, the last thing they want is for us to think for ourselves. And if they had said, you know, these buildings just came down and we don't know what happened, well, then we'd start wondering and thinking for ourselves. So it's very important to tell us why these things are, are happening and to start planting the official story. You know, I have a, a great example that I like to, to use for proof that government controls the media. And it really has nothing to do with 9-11 but I think it's a, a, a great example. <clears throat> um, here in the United States, uh, a very important historical figure is Martin Luther King, the civil rights leader. Uh, he's so important, uh, Martin Luther King, that there is uh, a federal holiday uh, commemorating his birth. And of course, uh, King was shot and killed, assassinated, in 1968, supposedly assassinated uh, by a lone nut, uh, a lone gun, gunman <clears throat> named uh, James Earl Ray. Uh, but ever since it happened, many people, including his own family, believed that he was actually assassinated by a government conspiracy. Well, in 1999, in other words, not that long ago, there was a trial, and the family of Martin Luther King brought a lawsuit for wrongful death, uh, alleging that Martin Luther King was killed by a government conspiracy. And they had witnesses, including the Uh, owner of the nightclub, where, which was right next to where the murder happened. Uh, they had some police officers uh, who were there. Um, and they actually uh, proved that they, they, they won their case. Now, there's two really, uh, there's one interesting thing, and there's another very interesting thing. 
Uh, the interesting thing is that they proved their case, that that jury found that Martin Luther King was killed by a, a government conspiracy. And while that's interesting, what's really interesting is that while the trial was going on in 1999, it was never on the news. Now, that is astonishing. Uh, the fact that uh, <clears throat> I don't know if, if you know how famous it was in Germany, but in, in the United States in 1995, we had the O.J. Simpson trial. Of course, there was this famous football player accused of murder, and that trial was on television every day and every night for a year. But now in 1999, there's a trial about who killed the most famous civil rights leader, Martin Luther King, a man for whom there's a federal holiday, and there's not one mention of it on the news. Not one. And the only reason I ever heard about it, there's, there's a website, there's a few things that you can find, and it happened. I mean, you know, you can learn about this, but the only explanation I can think of for that is that a government official went to the news people and said, don't cover this story. You know, so I, I absolutely believe that they have the power to do that. Ja, ich habe die Frage gestellt, wie kann es sein, ähm, wie kann es passieren, dass ähm, nach äh, dass Medien ähm, falsch berichten, dass sie solche Irrtümer berichten wie am 11. September. Und die wahrscheinlichste Erklärung äh, könnte sein, dass ähm, die äh, Regierung ähm, Nachrichten vorgibt, wo, wo, wo vorgibt, was nicht zu berichten sei. Bei 9-11 zum Beispiel beim World Trade Center äh, Nummer 7 haben äh, die Reporter äh, Philip Hayton und Jane äh, Stanley von äh, BBC die Erläuterung gegeben, warum das World Trade Center äh, 7 zusammengebrochen ist. Also sie haben es direkt, direkt erläutert, so, äh, wo es noch, noch gar nicht zusammengebrochen war. Das sieht danach aus, dass man äh, die Leute davon abhalten will, selber die Hintergründe zu hinterfragen. Dass es äh, ganz wichtig ist, die Erläuterung zu geben. Und ähm, ja, das ist ein anderer Punkt, ist ein anderes Beispiel, das hat jetzt mit 9-11 nicht direkt zu tun. Äh, Martin äh, Luther King, äh, der bekannte äh, berühmte Bürgerrechtler aus den USA, 1968 ermordet. Man äh, offizielle Geschichte ist, es war ein Einzeltäter und 1999 hat es ein äh, Gerichtsverfahren gegeben und äh, da soll äh, seine Familie äh, gewonnen haben. Mit äh, die haben äh, geltend gemacht, dass es, ähm, dass damals die Regierung dahinter gesteckt habe ähm, und es ist nicht irgendwo in den Nachrichten gewesen. Äh, aber äh, dass ein Mann, nachdem ein Feiertag in den USA benannt ist, 1995 der Fall O.J. Simpson nicht jemand, nachdem ein Feiertag benannt ist, war ein ganzes Jahr lang fast jeden Tag zu sehen. Um, uh, could you uh, tell me uh, where I find this with Martin Luther King and that his family has won uh, this, uh, this uh, case? Oh, um, I, I'm sure if you just, just Google uh, Martin Luther King Conspiracy Trial, uh, okay. you'll find it. Okay. Um, um, in order to find Uh, more about your work, um, um, your work as a musician and also your work uh, and as a filmmaker and also your work regarding 9-11. Where uh, can we um, learn more about your work? Well, um, right now uh, my, my site acebaker.com is down. I, I hope to have it back up uh, very shortly. So ho hopefully acebaker.com. Ähm, ja, im Moment ist, äh, läuft die Webseite nicht, aber soll bald wieder laufen, acebaker.com. And uh, you have a website on 9-11? I, I, I don't. Right now, I think just go to, uh, to YouTube. My channel is Colin Alexander. Um, 
uh, Colin Alexander on YouTube, and uh, the Psy Opera film is available in uh, English and also in German. And um, uh, the Psy Opera film, den findet man auf YouTube. Und es gibt ihn äh, in englischer und auch in deutscher Sprache auf YouTube unter dem äh, sein, unter dem Namen Colin Alexander, sein YouTube. -Kanal. And also, yeah, there's, I mean, I have my blog, which is uh, acebaker.blogspot.com. acebaker.blogspot.com äh, ist, ein, ist ein Internetblog. Ähm, Uh, that's a blog we have, we have seen, so I've been a bit confused that you have said your website is down. Okay. Okay. Many thanks uh, for the information. Um, uh, I recommend uh, our listeners to uh, watch the uh, Great American uh, Psy Opera. It's 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 four hours, but it's four hours full of information and. Um, it, It's really, it's really, it's it's really, it's really fascinating. You can you can watch the, the whole for 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 hours uh, at at one time. It's so uh, it's really great and uh, uh, groundbreaking uh, information and it's um, and uh, w with great music by Ace Baker. Well, yeah, thank you, thank you very much. I mean, it is in uh, a number of parts, so you don't have to watch it all at once. It's in. Uh, in broken up into chapters, but um, yeah, I, uh, I I wrote this uh, film not really realizing uh, how long it would be, and I just I wrote what I, I had to say, and it ended up being a kind of a series more than a single film. But thank you for the kind words. Thank you, and thank you for taking the time for the interview. Yeah, Great. Susan ist ähm, vierstündiger ist ein vierstündiger Film äh, Dokumentarfilm und äh, es ist so spannend dass man wirklich in einem Stück sich anschauen kann man kann ihn aber auch kapitelweise schauen es sind acht verschiedene Kapitel es ist äh, eine Menge Musik von S. Baker dabei und ähm, ja sein äh, sein Internetblog ist sbaker.blogspot.com da findet man den Film oder eben auch auf seinem YouTube Kanal äh, Colin Alexander Demnächst wieder ist auf seiner Webseite acebaker.com zu sehen. Many thanks for the interview. My pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye.